Howdy, Zach. I'm making a reply video to a re video that you posted to YouTube here. And I'm going to be kind. So, pull up a cup of urine and make yourself comfortable and let's get started. I know, Globe. There are a lot of people out there who, I mean, when I mean a lot of people, I mean a lot of young people like my age. I'm 18. I don't look 18, but that's a different story. But there are a lot of people that... There's this thing called video editing, <clears throat> so that if you're making a video and you're starting to babble and your thoughts are confused and you sound like Sarah Palin, you can stop that recording, you can delete it, and you can try again. You know, in public schools, you are taught that global warming is true. I very much hope that there are no public schools in the United States that are teaching that global warming is true. Global warming is not true. There's no scientists out there who say global warming is true. I very much hope that every public school out there is teaching that global warming is real. The evidence is overwhelming that we are the cause, we being humanity. True? No. Real? Yes. Now, I'm not here to say, to make up, I'm not here to force my opinion down your throat. Yes, I'm a Republican. No, I'm not crazy. That just cracks me up. Zach, your video is about climate change. Why mention politics? That's kind of the gist of how the media spreads about Republicans, how they're evil and all that, but I'm not here to force that down in your throat either. But, I've researched global warming. Research. You use the word research. I suspect you don't know what the word research means. Uh, what papers, for example, have you had published in science journals? When you use a word, it's kind of your responsibility to actually pick the correct ones. Um, I suspect you don't mean research when you say research. And I'm just giving you the other side. In science, there is no such thing as the other side. There is observed reality and a massive amount of evidence compiled regarding that reality. And generally, it is a phenomena observed in nature, such as human-caused climate change. There's that side, if you want to call it. It is called science and evidence, the ponderance of that evidence. There's that big, massive side. And then there are an almost infinite number of wrong answers. It's not a issue or a question of one side or the other side. It is a question of being correct and being incorrect. Of the story. Because in public schools you are taught that global warming is true. In public school one is taught, not you are taught. One plus one equals two. It would be fallacious, idiotic, stupid, and socially suicidal to teach 1 plus 1 equals 5, or it could be equal in 13, it could be equal negative 7. There is one correct answer. And regarding human-caused climate change, scientists know what the answer is. And it should damn well be taught in public schools. That's it. You don't get the other side. Regarding observed reality, there is one correct answer. There are not any other sides to reality. Zach, you would have us teach wrong answers in public schools, apparently because your political identification requires it. Zach. Zach. Here. here. Flat. Earth. Should teachers teach in public schools that 
the Earth may not be an oblate spheroid, but could very damn well be a flat disk. That's, quote, the other side, end of quote. You apparently want people to include, in the public school system, wrong answers to questions for political reasons. Do you see any problem with that? In my opinion, you should get both sides of the story in schools and decide for yourself. Both sides. Therefore, Earth should be taught as if it was flat so that students may make up their mind about the spherical shape of the Earth or the flat shape of the Earth. Why only two so-called sides? Perhaps Earth is a flat triangle. There's three options, by golly, they should all be taught, right? Perhaps Earth is a pyramid that Ben Carson stores grain in. There's another side. By golly, we need to teach all four, right? So that students can make up their mind. What if Earth is a cube? What if Earth is shaped like Jennifer Lawrence's left tip? There's another that we have to teach in public schools so that students can make up their mind, by golly. Which is, of course, my personal favorite. Um, that evil, horrible monster, uh, Christopher Columbus, believed that Earth was shaped like a human breast. And it actually wasn't completely round, but it was sort of potato-shaped. Should we teach that also? We know, with a massive, incredible burden of evidence just piled upon us, that Earth is an oblate spheroid. We have just as much evidence, a massive, massive weight of evidence showing that human-caused climate change is happening, has happening, has been happening, and is a major crisis that humanity needs to solve. There is no other side out there that can be taught. However, that's not the case, so I'm here to give you the other side. Alright. Now, global warming, that's what a lot of people say, oh, you know, the ice caps are melting, Antarctica is getting smaller and all that shit. Parts of Antarctica are actually increasing the ice mass. This is because parts of Antarctica are also losing ice mass because the atmosphere over Antarctica has been warming anomalously. And when you warm the atmosphere, it can hold more moisture and therefore it snows more, thicker, longer. So parts of Antarctica are actually increasing ice mass due to the warming of the planet. Overall, the ice masses on planet Earth, all of them, approximately 87% of ice masses are losing mass. Approximately 10% is increasing ice mass, and the remainder, nobody knows for sure, but it is very closely 88% of the remainder and 10% of the remainder. You factor in the remainder into the fractions that are actually measurable, and you get an estimate. We know the ice on planet Earth is melting anomalously. We know why. We can see that the sun's output has increased over the past 70 years to the value of 0.08 watts per square meter. We know that is not enough to melt all of the ice that has melted. We know that human activities cool the planet by more than one watt per square meter. We also know that human activities warm the planet by more than two and a half watts per square meter. When you sum all these together, 
We know for a fact, because it is an observed fact, measured, weighed, quanti quantified, qualified, studied for almost 200 years, by the way, that human activities are warming the planet by almost 1.5 watts per square meter. We also know that approximately 0.6 watts per meter of the surface ocean, that anomalous energy is going into the oceans at depth of over 500 feet to more than 1,000, I'm sorry, 500 meters and below to almost 2,000 meters. We know where the anomalous heat is going. Not only the cause of the anomalous warming, we know pretty good where the energy budget is being spent in the climate system on Earth. <sighs> there is absolutely no reason at all out there to teach something different when the, all of the evidence, without exception, shows what the cause is. <sighs> Regarding Antarctic, it looks like the west shelves of ice could very well melt and plunge into the um, Pacific Ocean within your lifetime, Zach. And if that happens, it will contribute more than one meter average over the globe in sea level rise. That means at least 800 million people will have to relocate from the coast go inshore. It means over $264 trillion worth of infrastructure along the, the society, humanity's uh, coast will be destroyed if it's not moved inland. To teach that it is not happening, to teach that there is some other side, is social suicide. Yes. However, in the those people who believe in global warming, and I've talked to them. I'm not Only an idiot believes in global warming. I'm not saying every global warming person believes in global warming is like this. But the people I've talked to want more wind power. You know, it's gonna save birds and all that, and save you know all for the environment. I've, I've heard that. I'm not just people I've talked to over the years. Golly, Zach, they want you to live healthy and happy and strong and productive and have a good life. How dare they? All right. Well, let's see. Wind power itself. Wind power is 3% of the U.S. electricity. 3%, okay? Wind power kills nearly a million bats per year. No. The highest estimate is 400,000 dead bats per year globally. The low estimate, about 20,000 dead bats per year globally. No one knows yet how many bats die due to wind turbines globally every year. My crotch has a link to the estimates. Zach, do you know how many people die from burning coal every year globally? We're talking human lives, Zach not bat lives. 170,000 is the low estimate of how many human beings die because people are burning coal. If you add kerosene and fuel oils and other fossil fuel um, the sources that people burn to heat and to cook with, well over one million human lives every year due to the use and burning and consumption of fossil fuels. Bats, humans. Zach, you're an intelligent lad. Is a human life more valuable than a bat's life? A million bats, and that's just three percent of our electricity. And I've heard this too, and I've seen articles about it. But when they're when the media or 
people who believe in global warming hear about, say, a thousand, a hundred thousand bats being killed every year. And they say, global warming! That's the first thing that they bring up. It's global warming. I'm sorry, but are you talking about yourself? You started talking about something that you believe is called global warming, and then you immediately switch to wind turbines and bat deaths, and now you are complaining about people who are doing the exact same thing that you did. And there are a lot of people who believe in global warming, like a lot of global warming scientists want to ramp up the wind power. Global warming scientists! Global warming scientists! Of that, there is no such thing as a global warming scientist. There's geophysicists, there's climatologists, there's glaciologists, there's atmospheric um, meteorologists. There's a hell of a massive science venue collection that uh, represents at least half a million scientists in 85 countries who study human-caused climate change. And by the way, they all agree on the subject. It's us doing it. Global warming scientists. To say, you know, 10. If it was ramped up to 10, or 20, or 30%. Yes, if wind power was ramped up to 30% of the United States, currently there's 15,000 human beings in the United States who die from burning coal to generate power, electricity. If we could reduce that by 30%, it would reduce more than 30% of the United States citizens who die prematurely because of we're no longer burning coal, so those people get to live longer. Zach, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, the annual bat death total of each year would rise. Nobody knows how many bats are being killed by wind turbines anywhere in the globe. And by the way, it is a globe, not a disc. Also, Zach, how many bats die from the burning of fossil fuels? If you, quote, researched, end of quote, the subject, you should know that answer. I will give you the full opportunity to answer that question in a reply video if you want to make one. Zach, how many bats die every year because humans are burning fossil fuels? You're already looking at 3%, 1 million bats kill each year. Now say raise that up to 10 or 30%. You can do the math. I did the math. Almost 200,000 human beings could live longer, happier, stronger, healthier every year if humans cut way back on the burning of the fossil fuels. Just in the United States, 15,000 American citizens die prematurely because of only burning coal, not in all of the other fossil fuels that we use, just coal. 15,000 United States citizens every year. Zach, human lives, bats, pick one. Another example is in Australia, their highest record temperature occurred more than half a century ago. And only two Two of Australia's seven states have set their all-time temperature record during the past 40 years. Queensland in 2014 heat wave paled, you guys know what paled means, I hope, in comparison to the 1972 heat wave that occurred 42 years of global warming ago. Zach, if we set a record high temperature 100 years ago and we break it, um, 75 years ago and we continue to break the 100 year record again and again and again and again at a faster rate and more recently the, the years that are most recent are breaking that old record 
more often, faster. We have a pr problem, Zach. The planet is warming. We can see, and we have seen, because Zach, we have the data, we could plot it, that not only globally are high global average temperature records being broken constantly and at a faster rate than ever, we can also see that done regionally. Regions of the planet are setting higher uh, yearly average temperatures faster than ever before and they have far outstripped all, and I mean without an exception, except at the moment the mid-Atlantic just below Greenland, but there's a reason why, all of the record low temperatures it used to be a one-to-one -one ratio before the Industrial Revolution. You would have a record high temperature, you would have a record low temperature, and the ratio would be one-to-one. -one. 35 years ago, it was 1.8 to 1. 20 years ago, it was 2.2 to 1. 2.2 warming to 1 cooling. Zach, guess what the ratio is. Currently, more than 4 to 1 record high temperatures regionally to record low temperatures regionally. All of the scientists know why. <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. I don't know what goes through my mind sometimes. Just bear with me. No comment. If global warming caused a 2014 Queensland heat wave. No, global warming does not cause heat waves. Why wasn't it as severe as a 1972 Queensland heat wave? Because global warming does not cause heat waves. No scientist says global warming causes heat waves. And you said you researched this. Hmm? Hmm? Um, those global warming analysts and scientists, can they answer that one? You asked a nonsense question that makes no sense because you assume there are scientists out there who have said global warming causes heat waves. No scientist has made that claim. No scientist will make that claim. See the problem here, Zach. Maybe you guys can actually answer in the comments below. I don't mind debating with people. But it's stupid and it's silly. The world scientists, geophysicists, astronomers, chemists, physicists, climatologists, chirologists, glaciologists. Stupid and silly. Zach. May I call you Zach? Could it be that your conclusion that all of the world scientists are acting silly and stupid, or maybe, maybe, Zach, you don't understand what they are saying. You don't understand their conclusions. You do not understand why they have concluded what they have concluded. Maybe, I'm just throwing this out here, Zach, the silly and stupid is not them. Bear with me, Zach. It could be because, and I'm just, like I said, throwing this out there, you don't understand the science, you don't understand anything about the subject. Just throwing it out there, Zach! Um, I don't mean to be impolite, but uh, maybe you can consider that just suggesting. And it's to blame every single heat wave or somewhere where the t you know where there's extreme heat somewhere to blame that on global warming is is just a stale and discredited tactic Zach no scientist anywhere is doing that no scientist anywhere will be doing that no scientist blames any extreme heat wave anywhere 
on global warming. Human caused climate change. Scientists are not doing that, Zach. Scientists have said, and correctly, that human caused climate change is increasing the frequency of extreme weather events, including heat waves. That is an observed fact. We know why that increase in the rate is happening. No scientist, Zach, is saying climate change and global warming is causing heat waves. They're not doing that, Zach. They won't do that, Zach. Straw man argument, Zach. Look it up, uh, maybe. In the playbook of global warming analysts. It's, it's, it's dumb. Ugh, and there's more on here about it. It's just... And then there are people who think all oh, the polar ice is melting, it's decreasing, and in fact, the polar ice is increasing and it's not melting. Why, Zach? Why is all of the evidence showing polar ice is decreasing? Why do we have pictures of the poles that show ice is decreasing? Sea ice extent at the Arctic ice mass extent at the Antarctic. Why is all that evidence showing the exact opposite of what you just said is happening? Heat waves are not increasing, they're diminishing. And polar bears are increasing in numbers, they're not going extinct. No, polar bear numbers are decreasing. There are 19 known Populations of polar bears on planet Earth. Three populations are stable. Eight are declining. The others, we don't know because we cannot count them accurately. Overall, polar bear population is decreasing and sharply. And there is a very real threat that they will go extinct because when you remove Arctic sea ice, the polar bears can't hunt on the missing ice and they have to swim and we can see a hell of a lot of polar bears are currently starving at the moment because Arctic sea ice extent is rapidly decreasing. <sighs> Lakes in my crotch as usual. And then the satellite, we've had satellite images that show summer ice caps is thicker and covers 1.7 million more square kilometers than it did two years ago, or three years ago, I see. That has happened seven times since 1979 when satellites started measuring Arctic sea ice extent. It goes down, it takes a year or two, goes up a little, it goes down more. A year or two, it goes up, it goes down more. Year or two, it goes up, it goes down more. Zach, look at the entire database. Look at the sharp plunge of sea ice extent. Every now and then, under the sharp decrease trend, you'll get a year or two where sea ice extent bumps up a little bit. And then it plunges again, Zach. You said you researched this? Should say. Should say. Should. I can't talk. I don't know. Should say. And then if you've heard about Al Gore predicting that it would be ice free by now, that we would. No more polar ice. No, Al Gore did not make that prediction. He said nothing like that. A hell of a lot of people out there, to be polite, have said that he made that prediction. He did not. Here is what Al Gore actually said. Quote, One study estimated that it could be completely gone during summer in less than 22 years. Another new study to, present it, to be presented by United States Navy researcher later this week 
warns that it could happen in as little as seven years. Seven years from now, period. Al Gore never made a prediction saying Arctic would be ice-free by now. Never said it! And you said you researched this? Zach, I see no evidence at all that you have researched anything about the subject. Right now, is this out there? Because three years later, three years later, it's still there. And it covers 1.7 more, 1.7 million more square kilometers than it did three years ago. And there's been some surface data that suggests that man-made carbon dioxide has not, in fact, increased global warming temperatures. From 1940, listen, from 1940 to 1975, coal-fired plants invented fumes with great abandon and without great resistance by greens. If you guys don't know what that means, then, all right, you're going to have to figure that out for yourselves. From 1940 to 1947, there was a slight increase in temperature. From 1975 to 97, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, for 1940 to 1975, the earth was slightly cooler. And we know why. You know what happens when you burn fossil fuels, Zach. <clears throat> Coal has a hell of a lot of sulfur in it. Automobiles produce a hell of a lot of particulate matter called pollution. We call this aerosols, Zach. Aerosols. When you put these aerosols into Earth's atmosphere, you know what happens, Zach. They block the sun, cooling the Earth. Meanwhile, carbon dioxide that humans have been producing was warming the Earth, Zach. Warming. Human activities warming the planet. Human activities cooling the planet. The warming was very slightly less than the cooling. Therefore, you see the cooling dip. There's a hell of a lot of peer-reviewed science papers on the subject. Links down below. We know why, with very high confidence, Earth cooled in the late 60s and the early 70s. Sulfur dioxide in Earth's atmosphere. From 75 to 97, there was a slight increase in temperature. Now, 1970, 1997 to now, 18 years, the year I was born, really, there hasn't been an increase in temperature or a decrease. It's just sitting there. How very odd, Zach, that no scientist out there agrees with you. In the 1990s, global average temperature increased 0.14. Celsius. In the 2000s, global average inc uh, temperature increased an additional 0 0.2 um, centigrade. In the 2010s, it, it has increased so far 0 0.07. In the 18 years, Zach, that you have been uh, on the flat planet here, Earth, past 18 years, global average temperature increased 0 0.32 centigrade. Celsius. How do you explain your odd assertion when all of the data shows global average temperature has been increasing and sharply? How do you explain that, Zach? You know, like a cloud floating in air that is not rising or rolling, it's just, you know, there. Kind of like your hand steady as a rock. You know, not this, this. And then, but we have kids who are graduating, like I did, I graduated this year, 2015, from high schools who were, you know, like all across the country, was taught that global warming is true. But I'm not insulting young kids. Okay, screw it, I'm gonna insult. Never mind, I'm not of this BS of, oh, I don't hurt your feelings. There are, you got high school kids and college kids who don't do your research and just believe whatever the media says, you're clueless. You're not thinking. And no, I'm not some Republican extremist that's going crazy and, you know, it's just... 
think for yourself, do the research, don't just listen to the media. I don't trust everything the media says. I do trust, in or the government, I do trust them to some degree on certain things, like with shootings and all that, but when it comes to this global warming stuff, just please do your research. I did that, and I see that everything you said, without exception, is wrong. Now what? I'm not asking you to believe my opinion, and if you don't, I'm going to hate you. I'm just saying, I'm here to give you the other side. If you want to do your research, do your research. If you don't, hopefully, if you watch this video, then maybe you'll think of the other perspective, the other side of the story. If you want to stick with global warming is true, okay, that's your opinion, you're entitled to it. It's not a matter of opinion, Zach. It is a matter of observed reality contradicting every single statement that you have made is wrong. All of the evidence shows it is wrong. If it's merely your opinion, then all of your opinions are observed to be wrong. Therefore, where does that leave us, Zach? It leaves us still teaching observed reality in the public school systems. It leaves you far behind on the learning curve where you don't really need to keep up because a hell of a lot of your peers are keeping up. They understand the science. They know what the problem is. They know what some of the solutions are. You've been left behind, Zach. And... I consider that a goddamn shame, but you asked people to answer your questions in your video. Therefore, I have taken almost two hours of my time to do that for you. And I hope you appreciate it. If you do not appreciate it, I don't care either, because your peers will. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.